Hi, AP class. Um, today we are talking about, we're going to start talking about population. Um, so this video is going to be the material that we're going to use in class on both Tuesday and Wednesday this week. And we are going to talk about doing some calculations with populations as well as um, looking at some graphs about populations. So we're going to try and start this. Let's see. Okay, so the computer's freaking out a little bit while I get to this. All right, so hopefully this is working for you. So let me start at the beginning. Um, population growth calculations. So by the end of the PowerPoint, we are going to be able to calculate population change, percent growth rate, and doubling time of the populations. We're also going to be able to list the three factors that affect population size and interpret age structure diagrams. Uh, I'm not assigning reading for this, but if you want to use the book as an additional reference, you can look at chapter 6. Um, these two pieces of information that we're talking about today particularly will be um, chapter 6, section 6, 2 and 6, 3. Okay, so here are basics. As you can probably guess, if there are more births than deaths in a population, then the population increases. If there's more deaths than births, a population decreases. If there's the same number of births and deaths, then population stays the same. Some vocabulary to go over. We have birth rate, which is the number of live births per 1,000 people in a given population in a given year, and death rates. Similarly, is the number of deaths per 1,000 people in a given population in a given year. Immigration with an I is movement of people into a specific area. So I remember it because immigration with an I starts with I, obviously, like I just said, and that means people come in. Immigration with an E is the movement of people away from a specific area, and I remember that because the E at the beginning of immigration is people exiting, so E for exit, I for in. So we use a couple of calculations to track population growth, um, and we are particularly we are going to talk about population change, percent increase, which you should have seen in math class before, uh, percent growth rate, population percent growth rate, and doubling time. So Population change is pretty basic. Uh, it's the number of people leaving compared to the number of people entering. So we're going to take the births and immigrations or people coming into the population um, and add those together and then subtract the people leaving, which is the deaths and immigration. I don't have any examples of this um, because it's pretty straightforward. If you need an example, um, please ask, and I will provide you with one. So percent growth is the next one. We're talking, um, we're looking at by what percent is something increasing. So you're going to have the new minus the original divided by the original times 100. Okay, so new minus original divided by original times 100. An example of this, so if we start with a money example because um, <clears throat> for some reason that always seems to stick in people's heads better. So say you work at In-N-Out Burger and you get paid $10 an hour. Your manager decides to give you a $2 raise. So now you make $12 an hour. What is the percent growth in your pay increase? So we're going to take our new, which is $12 an hour, divided by our original, which is $10 an hour. Sorry new minus our old and then divide by our old and multiply that by 100 so we'll get um, new which was 12 minus 10 is 2 divided by 10 times 100 is 20 percent down here at the bottom okay so now let's look at a population example um, 
so if we look at the population of the fictitious town of Hamptonia in 2012 is um, 1 million. In 2013, the population is 1,300,000. What is the percent of growth in the population of Hamptonia? So remember, we're going to take our new number, which is 1,300,000 minus 1 million, so we're left with 300,000, and then divide by 1 million and multiply by 100, and that'll give us 30%. When you are doing these calculations on the AP test, when you're doing these calculations anytime, it's very, very easy to forget to multiply by 100 or to forget to divide by the original. So remember, those two steps are really important to these calculations. Moving on to our next calculation, we have population percent growth rate. We're looking at by what percent the population is growing. So we're doing the same basic kind of population, the same basic kind of calculation that we did um, back here in percent growth, except this time it's very specific to population. So we're going to incorporate our um, people coming into the population, which is remember is our births plus immigrations, minus the people leaving the population, which is deaths plus immigrations, and then divide that by whatever the original population was and multiply the whole thing by 100 to get the percent. So um, if the population of Hamptonia is 1 million, and there are a thousand births, a hundred immigrants, five hundred deaths, and a hundred immigrants. Uh, what is the population growth rate? So um, here we are going to take our births plus our immigrants. So that's a thousand plus a hundred. So we get one thousand one hundred minus our deaths of five hundred and our immigrants, which is a hundred. So we have 1,100 minus 600, um, which I'm doing math in my head, so you guys are going to have to correct me if I get this wrong. Um, so that would leave us with 500 on in the numerator, and then we're going to divide by a million um, and then multiply by 100. And... I'll let you guys get that to calculation because I forgot to write down on my slide. Okay. Remember, for our test trap, remember immigrants is in, immigrants is out. Okay. Doubling time is the number of years it takes a population to double. So if we want to find the doubling time, um, we are going to divide 70 by the population growth percent, which we just calculated. So if the population of our town is, 100, is 1 million and it has a 2% growth rate, how long is it going to take for the population to double? So we're just going to divide 70 by the growth percent and get 35 right there. Okay. Um, and make sure you're dividing by the whole number population growth percent and not converting it into a decimal. So um, here's a second example that we already went over. I don't know why that's included again. Okay, here's a uh, population example for percent growth, if you want to go through that. All right, so moving on to age structure diagrams. So this lovely pink and blue thing that you see here is an age structure diagram. Um, sometimes people call them population pyramids. They show the number, the number of people in each age group. So we can see that um, there are approximately 840 to 
or sorry, 50 to 54 year old men in this example. And then we have a side for each gender. So we have males and females. And it's usually set up like that, that males are on the left and females are on the right. Um, but it can switch. So be careful to pay attention to labels. OK. <laughs> the text got a little squished here. All right, so we have some basic shapes that we're going to look for in population structure diagrams. Um, you can find these diagrams and a little bit more information of reading on page 102 in your textbook. Um, so if a population is expanding rapidly, we have a lot of really young people in our population. That indicates a high birth rate. Um, and then as we go up, our the older people, the number of older people kind of tapers off in both males and females. And then if we look at a country that has a population that is expanding slowly, we still see a pretty high um, birth rate down here at the bottom, so a lot of young people. And then as we go up, it slowly tapers off um, as people get older. So the number of older people slowly tapers off. And over here, it quickly tapers off. A stable population um, is this one here, and it has uh, pretty equal numbers of very young people and middle-aged people, um, and it starts to taper off a little bit when people get um, into older age. A declining population, um, so people are not replacing themselves. People are not having children very frequently. Um, so we have fewer, a lot fewer young people than we do middle-aged or older people. Um, so the it's kind of like an inverted pyramid. Um, so we can see that people are not replacing themselves here. So populations uh, People who have populations that are um, have a large proportion of people in pre-reproductive ages have very large potential for rapid growth because all of those people who are being born, who are very young right then, um, are later going to grow up to have their own children. And so that's going to just exponentially increase the population. It's just a little side note going back to this rapidly expanding um, diagram. Okay, so in a lot of developed countries like the U.S. and um, Europe, you can see that the population bars, that the population is much smaller and the bars are pretty much the same, same length all the way up and down the diagram. There's not too much change in the width, in the length of the bars from the very young ages to the older ages. Um, so that means that the population is pretty much staying the same size. If the length of the bars is about the same all the way up, the population is pretty much staying the same size. In developing countries, so this rapidly growing population, notice that the bars at the bottom are much, much longer than these bars at the top. So that means that the population is going to increase rapidly because we have all of these people coming into the population who are later going to have their own kids. Um, which is just going to make things kind of explode population number-wise. So um, if we look at the shape, it can tell you a lot about a country. So if we look at 2006, the percent of people under the age of 15 in less developed countries, squeeze in here, um, is about 32%. So we can add up the whole population if we wanted to, um, and then divide by the number of people in this 15 to 19, or underneath this, uh, in these bottom three uh, rows, and get 32%. And then if we look up here, the more developed countries at these bottom three rows, that comes to be about 17% of the total population. If the pyramid has a big base, the population is going to grow. If the pyramid has a small base, the population is going to shrink because there's not going to be very many people to have children in the future. So quickly we want to know, be able to very quickly recognize what age structure shapes mean uh, for the AP exam so that we don't waste time spending a lot of time thinking on this. Um, so if 
we see a very wide base, that means there is rapid growth. The birth rate is greater than the death rate, um, and we're looking at countries like Kenya and Nigeria, which are less developed countries. Oops. Okay, and then we have a stable or slow growth rate. The birth rate is almost equal to the death rate, so the bars are almost equal, so equal length all the way up and down. It's kind of almost a box-like shape, almost a rectangular shape. Um, so examples would be Canada and Denmark and Germany, or not Germany, um, and the U.S. and Japan. And then decreasing or negative growth. So the birth rate down here is less than the death rate. Um, we have a lot of old people in the society. It's an upside down pyramid with a very wide top. So examples would be Germany um, and some other countries in Europe and Japan. Well, yeah, uh, Germany and some other countries in Europe um, are going to have those basic age structures. Alrighty. So. Let's see if we can go back here. Um, technologically challenged. Excellent. Okay, there we go. I found myself again. Okay, um, so those are the basics that we will need to know for Tuesday and Wednesday's class. Um, in Tuesday and Wednesday's class, we will be applying them in labs, so make sure that you bring pencils and pens um, because we're likely going to be doing a lot of graphing by hand. And again, if you want to do any reading to um, strengthen your knowledge of this information, you can read section 6.2 and 6.3. Okay, that's it for population calculations and population age structures. Um, look forward to applying it.